Hey everybody! Today we're going to take a look at the Two Trees TS2 laser engraver. As far as the specs go, this is a 10 watt output laser, which is the same as most of the other ones that I've looked at, uh, with the exception of the laser packer. So it's a 10 watt output. It has a 32 bit motherboard, a 450 by 450 millimeter working area, which is just over 17 and a half inches. So that's that's pretty big. It has an auto height focus for the z-axis, which is the laser head axis, and that's really quite convenient. It has cable tray for the cables, which I think is a huge deal. In addition to just the base machine, you can get a lot of accessories with it or upgrades. They do have an air assist pump, which is really nice. It's quiet and it's small. There is a 20 watt output laser head available that would be just a direct you know, plug and play replacement onto this frame. They have the extension kit available for it. They have enclosures that you can get for it and then the honeycombs and basically all of the stuff. One of the things I'm most impressed with is their rotary setup. It's a combination chuck and roller system. So uh, I'm going to be showing you guys that after a little bit. All right, I've got the chuck on the rotary attachment, and I have the step jaws on there, and I'm using it in basically uh, in expansion mode, like you would on a, on a chuck. They have these that have the steps in, and then there are also these, which are like, you know, just L-type. But I wanted to grab the inside of this ring. So that's, I'm going to throw it on the ground. So that's how I'm, I'm going to do this to start with. Um, so there are a few weird things about this setup. One of the things I like about this laser is the uh, automatic height adjustment for the Z-axis. It has macros that you load into light burn or a laser gerbil and it auto focuses using this little proby thing but when you hook the rotary in you have to disable the homing command in the beginning it basically the macros that are built into auto focus involve the homing command so i took that out hoping that it would still auto focus and it wouldn't so i'm not positive if the focus is right for this because i haven't figured out how to focus it manually. I can't find, the documentation is lacking to, to say the least. I've really struggled trying to set up this rotary. There are not a lot of videos out there. The few that are, are not in English or in English subtitles. So um, I did finally find one guy who was doing it in French and I at least got the settings for light burn to start with as far as the millimeters per rotation. So that's where I started with that and uh, got it dialed in, actually using this piece of tape, or this roll of tape. I put this on the jaws and just ran a real low power just to make a line so that I could dial it in and get it to, uh, to, to line up perfectly. Now what I'm going to do with this is to make sure that I get this right the first time, I'm going to cover the outside of this little ring with tape and then um, run the run the job only at 20% still so it won't it won't go through the tape but then that way um, if I need to make any adjustments or you know something goes to fluey I have an opportunity to do that so so there are little Tommy bars that you use to open and close the chuck jaws I don't know, this is my first time doing this, so we're learning at the same time. Um, 
Hopefully it's not gonna be so tight that I can't get it off of there when I'm done. But if I do, I guess it's not that big a deal. So I think I'm gonna put this on the middle one there. Okay. Doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to hold it on there. All right, and then for the test run, uh, I'm not going to close the enclosure because I'm not really burning anything yet. So um, I guess the other thing that I have to do is focus this now, which all I did was put this over here. Brought it down manually until it touched, and then backed it off some, because I don't know I don't know how you're supposed to focus it if the autofocus doesn't work. Um, I do want to make sure that the chuck isn't going to hit that, which it is. So, um, hmm. well, I guess I'm going to focus this just so that clears. I don't really want to undo all this now. All right, so we're gonna clear. So I'm gonna All right, I'm gonna give it a go. Take tape off. Power back to what I'm gonna frame it one more time. I think we're gonna be all right. I'm just going for it. I can always hit the stop button. I probably should have flipped the rotary 180 so that the little distance probe was not hanging down over the chalk. It would be hanging down on the other side, which was lower. But at this point, I had it straight to itself, and I didn't want to mess with it, so I just let it go. Well, I didn't get it centered, but and my ring needed to be wider in order to get it more along the back, but I burned this as a line rather than a fill, so it's why the insides aren't filled. And then I reburned another one as a fill, but unfortunately I forgot and it did it backwards. So, uh, but you can see, you know, both ways will work. This may not be the easiest way to do this. Instead of blackening, I'm gonna drop it with paint and stuff, you can do it with a flame. Something else. All right. 